The International Criminal Court's recent issuance of arrest warrants for Yahya Sinwar and Benjamin Netanyahu marks a watershed moment in international law. This groundbreaking decision came in the wake of the violent confrontations on October 7, highlighting the ICC's commitment to holding high-profile figures accountable. The gravity of this decision cannot be understated, as it sends a powerful message across the globe about the reach and influence of international law in conflict zones. The implications of this move are profound, touching on issues of sovereignty, international relations, and the very fabric of international legal norms. The ICC, by stepping into this highly volatile arena, has asserted its role as a key player in international justice, capable of challenging global leaders. This action raises numerous questions about the future of international diplomacy and the role of legal institutions in maintaining global order. As we delve deeper into the details and implications of this decision, it becomes clear that the ICC is not just addressing specific individuals, but is also setting a precedent for future international legal proceedings. This development could potentially reshape how global governance and law enforcement are viewed, adding a new dimension to the accountability mechanisms that govern international relations. While this decision has been hailed by human rights organizations as a step towards justice, it also complicates the already tenuous relations between nations involved in the Middle East conflict. The following sections will explore the events leading up to this decision, the legal rationale behind it, and the wide array of international reactions it has elicited. The October 7th attacks represent a significant escalation in the long-standing conflict between Israel and Hamas. This day saw a surge in violence characterized by rocket attacks and military responses, which resulted in significant civilian casualties on both sides. These events did not occur in isolation. They were the result of mounting tensions that had been brewing over several years due to political, territorial, and religious disputes. Prior to this fateful day, there had been a series of provocations and retaliations that heightened animosities. The blockade of Gaza, political strife within Israeli politics, and the contentious issue of Palestinian statehood have all contributed to a volatile situation ripe for conflict. These factors, combined with the international community's inability to foster a lasting peace agreement, set the stage for the tragic events of October 7th. In response to these attacks, the international community was polarized, with various countries either condemning or supporting the actions of both sides. This incident not only resulted in loss of life, but also significantly altered the geopolitical landscape, making an already complex situation even more intricate. It is within this context that the ICC's decision to issue arrest warrants must be understood. This section has set the stage for understanding the legal principles that govern war crimes, which will be discussed next. The complexity of the situation is evident, and the role of the ICC in such contexts is both crucial and controversial, as it seeks to navigate through a maze of political and ethical dilemmas to uphold international law. Under the Rome Statute, the foundational treaty of the ICC, war crimes are defined as serious breaches of international humanitarian law that occur during an armed conflict. This includes targeting civilians, using prohibited weapons, and launching attacks without distinguishing between military targets and civilian areas. The issuance of arrest warrants for Sinwar and Netanyahu was grounded in allegations of such crimes, marking a significant use of legal tools in international conflict resolution. The legal criteria for these warrants are rigorous, requiring substantial evidence and a high threshold of proof. The ICC's actions suggest that there was compelling evidence pointing to the involvement of Sinwar and Netanyahu in activities that violated international law. This decision demonstrates the court's commitment to applying legal standards impartially, irrespective of the individual's positions or political power. Furthermore, the ICC operates under the principle of complementarity, which means it only intervenes when national jurisdictions are unable or unwilling to prosecute alleged war criminals. This principle is vital for understanding the ICC's role as it does not replace national systems. Rather, it acts as a last resort to ensure that justice is served when all other avenues have failed. This framework is essential for maintaining international order and ensuring that no individual, no matter how powerful, is above the law. 
The next section will explore how different nations have reacted to the ICC's bold move, shedding light on the varied perspectives regarding international justice and its implications for global diplomacy. The international response to the ICC's issuance of arrest warrants for Sinwar and Netanyahu has been mixed, reflecting the complex web of global politics. Many Western nations have expressed support for the ICC's decision, viewing it as a necessary step towards enforcing international laws and ensuring accountability. These countries, often advocates of human rights and international law, have reinforced their support for the ICC's role in global governance. Conversely, there are nations that have criticized the ICC's decision, viewing it as an infringement on national sovereignty and a biased intervention in regional conflicts. Some countries, particularly those with close ties to Israel, have argued that the ICC's actions could further destabilize the region and undermine prospects for peace. This division highlights the delicate balance between justice and diplomatic relations in international affairs. The varied reactions also underscore the challenges faced by international institutions in maintaining neutrality and effectiveness in a politically divided world. The ICC's decision is a litmus test for the international community's commitment to upholding the rule of law, even when doing so may have significant diplomatic repercussions. As we examine these reactions, it becomes evident that the ICC's warrants have not only legal, but also significant geopolitical implications. The final section will delve into these implications and discuss the potential shifts in regional dynamics that might arise from this unprecedented legal action. The issuance of arrest warrants by the ICC for high-profile leaders like Sinwar and Netanyahu could have far-reaching implications for Middle Eastern geopolitics. This bold move by the ICC might lead to increased tensions in an already volatile region, potentially affecting alliances and diplomatic relations. However, it could also pave the way for a new era where international law plays a more central role in resolving conflicts. The potential for these warrants to influence peace processes and negotiation dynamics cannot be underestimated. They may push regional players to adopt more cautious and legally mindful approaches, possibly leading to more structured and law-abiding methods of conflict resolution. On the other hand, they could also lead to hardening of positions, as parties feel targeted by international legal actions. Speculating on future developments, it is possible that this decision will inspire other nations to be more compliant with international law, fearing similar legal actions. Alternatively, it might lead to a backlash against the ICC, with countries withdrawing support or cooperation due to perceived overreach. Either way, the impact on regional stability and international relations will be significant and is likely to unfold over the coming years. As we look ahead, the role of international legal institutions and their impact on global politics will undoubtedly be a critical area of scrutiny. The long-term effects of the ICC's decision on Middle Eastern stability and international law enforcement will continue to evolve, shaping the geopolitical landscape for years to come. The ICC's decision to issue arrest warrants for Yahya Sinwar and Benjamin Netanyahu is a significant development in international law and Middle Eastern geopolitics. This action not only highlights the challenges of enforcing international law in conflict zones, but also raises important questions about the future of regional stability and international justice. As the implications of this decision unfold, it will be crucial for the international community to navigate these waters carefully, balancing the pursuit of justice with the need for diplomatic sensitivity. The path forward will require robust dialogue, cooperation, and a renewed commitment to international legal norms and human rights. Looking ahead, the effectiveness of the ICC and the broader international legal system in addressing such high-stakes issues will be closely watched. The outcomes of this historic move could either strengthen the role of international law in global affairs or lead to increased skepticism about its effectiveness in conflict resolution. In conclusion, while the road ahead is fraught with challenges, this landmark decision by the ICC could potentially lead to a more legally accountable and stable Middle Eastern region. The international community's response to this development will be key in shaping the future of both regional and global stability.